Hey, everybody, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and my guest tonight is Dr. Ron Weiss. He is the founder of Ethos Health. He's a physician and farmer and a board-certified internist and an assistant professor of clinical medicine at New Jersey Medical School. He's gone far beyond preaching diet and exercise to help fight disease. Last year, he launched Ethos Health, which he believes is the only farm-based primary care practice in the country on 342 acres in the verdant rolling countryside of Long Valley, New Jersey, in Morris County, an hour away from Manhattan. Ethos Health is a novel healthcare setting which offers patients and members of Ethos Communities supported agriculture, CSA, immediate access to a wide assortment of heirloom vegetables and fruit grown just steps from the exam room, inviting them to experience the power of organic, locally grown, plant-based food in a sustainable environment. A botanist by training, Dr. Weiss's farm is preserved, and he is committed to promote the health of the earth as well as people. At Ethos Health, through individual medical visits and a comprehensive educational program, A Year of Mindful Living, Dr. Weiss and his staff prevent and reverse illness by taking each patient on a journey towards plant-based whole foods lifestyle. Dr. Weiss, who holds an undergraduate degree in botany and music, partners with experienced organic farmers who conscientiously grow living medicines, which are delicious, nutrient-dense, and grown with methods that enrich the health and the soil and, in turn, the health of the patient. Please welcome Dr. Weiss. Boy, that is amazing. You really have taken the Hippocratic Oath. <laughs> well, well, I'm getting taken- dizzy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, it's not, you know, I normally, I, honestly, I'll be honest, usually I don't read people's entire bio, but it was so important in this case, so people could know what you do that I wanted to, I, I, I thought it was, it was worth spending the time to see what a unique uh, a type of practice you have, you really have taken Hippocratic Oath, literally. <laughs> Thank you, that, yes. Very kind of you, Chef. Yeah. I mean, well, in case people listening don't know, the Hippocratic Oath is let food be thy medicine. And you're not just preaching it. You're doing it. This, You know, let me tell you, we're just meeting tonight for the first time. It's a pleasure to get to talk to you. I never heard of you until somebody, as a regular listener, heard of you, saw you on the Today Show and said, you have to interview this man. And I wish I had heard of you sooner because I was filming my television show not too far from you in New York. And and you would have been an absolutely fabulous guest. But it's a a pleasure to, to get to know you now. And because what you're doing, like you say, I don't know anybody else that's doing what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I, we do think it's um, it's unique. Yeah, so you're it's a farmer, unique. you're a doctor, you're a farmer, you're a doctor. What, what do you like better? <laughs> well, um, I can't separate them. Uh, I, I like all of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything is, you know, the, the growing methods and what we are growing are linked directly to what we are doing for the patients to reverse and prevent their illnesses. So now, I, I see it as uh, it's truly, uh, and then and to st- take, take, take one step further, that in turn is dependent on the health of our surroundings and the environment. So in, in taking this kind of approach, we ensure that everyone and everything is healthy. Now, so. did you have this idea your whole life? Like, I mean, because you, 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 I watched a little cute YouTube video of you. You said your, your, you know, your dad wanted you to be a doctor, right? Yes. And so you um, complied. They did, like yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, always, um, I, even before uh, I had these glimmers of being a doctor uh, with my parents' influence, I just, it, plants and the magic of, Growing things um, took hold of me at a very young age that, uh, when now, my mother first helped me to plant some seeds, and I was just I was just uh, riveted by this, and and it connected me to the natural world. That is so cool. Now I imagine this. Did you always practice medicine this way, even before you had this 342 acre farm? Were you still recommending fruits and vegetables for your patient, even though you weren't actually um, growing them for them yet? That, Absolutely. Um, so my, my, the point of change, the cataclysmic change in my life professionally as a doctor was um, about a year after I finished all of my training. I'd been a doctor for, a practicing doctor for a year, and my father was diagnosed with end-stage pancreatic, metastatic pancreatic cancer. And, um, and, and we, uh, by luck, happened to 
uh, stumble into and adopt a plant-based whole foods diet. At the time, it was known as a macrobiotic diet, mm-hmm. and my father was transformed by this. And that's, that's, that's amazing. When, yeah. This is this is the experience that basically made me realize what the power of these foods were. And then from that point on, um, you know, I I ad- adopted you know these whole unrefined foods as the primary tool with which to help people. But how, uh, how it wasn't how until, it wasn't until, you know, I put all the other stuff, the growing, and well, always on the back burner until finally we came across this farm four years ago that I had wandered onto. Actually, this is, I, not many people know this. I, it was, I'd wandered onto this farm 25 years earlier as a medical student, uh, just taking some pictures. And it just so happened that um, I ended up on the same farm again, 25 years later. We we call that Bashir, huh? Yeah. Yes, I believe it is. Yeah. For for those that don't speak, uh, speak uh, Jewish, it just means it was meant to be. So when your father got ill, how long ago was that? Like how many years ago was that? Because this was, uh, this was in 1992. So that was this was 1992. 20, 20, so it was 20. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that yeah, yeah but 20, so how, 23 how, years ago. That that is yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So did up until the farm, did you have sort of like a like a regular practice, just you know, in just like working um, with us? Well, I started off um, with my father's illness. I was an emergency room attending at at oh. one of the busiest hospitals in New Jersey. Huh? Uh, it wasn't like ER where you know there was a team of doctors I was the only doctor in the entire hospital all night long and uh, it was a very busy ER so I did that for about six or seven years and that really uh, that was a very formative experience for me because you know I was just impacted by the vast flood of you know of acutely occurring manifestations of chronic illness all the heart attacks all the strokes Mm-hmm. All of the, you know, diabetic catastrophes. Or, and I, I got frustrated because I could not, I felt I, it was, it was very wonderful being able to save people in the moment. But yeah. at the end of the day, I knew they would be discharged and just continue on the same road. And yeah. that's when I decided to really leave the ER and, and make more of an impact by prevention, addressing yeah. preventive issues. And then I went out and opened up a primary care multi-specialty practice. And that's uh, where I was until four, you know, a uh, few years ago when we bought the farm. Right. Well, they don't Literally. say that. You buy the farm. <laughs> we don't want to. <laughs> yeah. No, we hope you bought the farm. That, that's a metaphor, obviously. Yeah. So, yes. Purchase that, that since you purchased. You kind of remind me of, you know, Green Acres. Remember that TV show where the lawyer from Manhattan, yes. you know, yep. And uh, yes, not too far from the fact. My my wife was a, a city girl living on the upper, enjoying the Upper West Side life there. And, you know, basically I, you know, she, uh, right, her idea was not to live on a farm. She wanted to live in, in New York. And, yeah, in a penthouse. And I this wanted is, the farm thing. I, yeah. You know, I... I smell a documentary in the making because this is this is just, <laughs> this is just such a fascinating yeah. story. Obviously, the Today yeah. Show picked up on it. You know, I watched the piece on the Today Show and it was great. But on one level, I was disappointed because why did they have to bring that person who wasn't even a doctor saying, "Well, you know, you have to be careful on a plant-based diet. Make sure you get enough nutrients and iron." Well, I mean, why well, do they have to do that? I think, you, know, it just, oh. you know, in in miniature, it is the the battles. Those are the battles that all plant-based whole foods people fight yeah. yep. every day. And it's, it's the, you know, yeah, that's the way, that's what, the way the establishment is. Right. Well, good. Yeah. It's still, still great that you were on that show. Now, do, do you yeah. have kids? And if so, did you raise them in this uh, way of eating? Yes, we have a, we have a, an eight and a nine year old soon to be 10 in another week. And um, so, um, uh, yes, we try our best. You know, it, it is sometimes difficult given mm-hmm. the pressures of friends, school, you know, lunches and stuff like that. But we, you know, we, we impress upon them a plant-based 
whole foods diet. Right, because, you know, I, I, this is, we get this question all the time, Dr. Weiss, and, you know, just not only on the show but in life because people are struggling so much to feed their kids healthy because of all the crap out there. I mean, we just had Halloween, and even parents that are following a whole food plant-based diet, they, they, they say their kids, their kids are too picky and they don't like vegetables. And so they're not just feeding them vegan crap, but a lot of them are feeding them, you know, regular pizza and chicken nuggets and hot dogs. And can, can you address that that's just not good <laughs> for your kids? I mean, it's just not. No. I don't, yeah, it's, don't, it's hard. It's a, it, I, it's, you know, obviously I don't think it's good for anyone. Right. But, um, you know, it's, it's hard because I think these, uh, these foods are drugs. Right. And um, they call, they have our names on them. Yeah. And they call us every time we eat them and they, we, they call us to have another serving the next meal or the meal after that. So, and especially with children, children don't understand these things. Yeah. So um, it's, you know, I think, you know, for some people can have a slice of pizza, uh, cheese pizza, uh, yeah. you know, once uh, or twice a year or once a month and then go on the straight and narrow. But I think it's most difficult for probably a child to do that. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm not yeah. one of those people that, that can have it. That's for sure. Yeah. But you, I'm, I'm looking at your pictures here and it's great. The side by side, there you are with, you know, in the farm with the vegetables and then the other one, you've got your stethoscope and your lab coat on and you, you, you look like you're in great shape. I mean, I, you know, I can tell from the picture. So you, you look like you're really yes, healthy. I, I specifically make a point to, to wear a white coat. <laughs> on the on the uh, in the farm office because I think people may get so confused when they come to the farm and may not identify. I, I had like a a, a, a um, identity crisis. Yeah, I figured, yeah. well, if I what should I wear? Should I wear overall? Should I wear a shirt? But then I don't look like a doctor, and they may not think I'm a doctor. So I make sure always to wear that white coat to signal yeah. that I am a physician. And, I think um, you. You know, on, on, at least in L.A. on the weekend, we have like these shows. They're, they're veterinarian shows, and they, they, they follow veterinarians around the practice. This, this would be, if I, was in, if I had a, and it was in a position to give somebody a TV show, this would make a great show, I think, you know, ha- watching, you know following you in your unique practice. Thank you. I, I think um, I, it's, it's an interesting life. And, uh, you know, we have many, we have fascinating people who come and join our program and they're just following their transformations is amazing and following the way they become embedded and build a community with all the other people who come to the farm, whether they're, you know, helping us to pull weeds in the field or plant potatoes or, you know, doing artwork in the fields and then putting it in the medical practice or, you know, you know, all pitching together for potluck dinners. It's, you know, it's, it's a wonderful and a very rich experience. Tell, tell me about your typical patient now. I mean, how, how do they find you? And, and, and what, what you tell, I, I saw the girl on, the, on your website that lost over 100 pounds, and now she volunteers. Yeah. So. Well, you know, we, we, the farm, and it's, and it's um, the Farm practice has been open now one year. So we are getting, you know, we're picking up speed. We're getting more and more patients. And we have just, you know, the gamut and wide variety of different kinds of people. Uh, Everything from, you know, our youngest patients are like four and seven years old as part of a family. And um, they turn, you talked about kids before. They, 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 their entire family joined our program, our, our educational and medically guided plant transformation program, which is called a year of mindful living. And the, uh, the, the boy who, you know, this past year was seven years old, did such a fantastic, uh, made himself a fantastic transformation with, with what we call the 30 day Dr. Weiss's 30 day challenge. He made an entire school project out of it and it won the blue ribbon in his town and it was put in in the local King supermarket. And so we have patients like that to, you know, 85 year olds uh, and who, you know, you'd think would be at the end of life with their illnesses, but plants are so powerful that they even retrieve these late stage patients and you know it's just um 
And the other thing is that the, the people within the community, their, their fellow members in the program are so supportive of them. It's just, um, you know, it's, it's a wonderful process. You know, I would so love to go to you. I don't want to live in New Jersey, though. Can you, like, open an office? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I went to I know, I hear you. I'm so cold on the Well, East you're Coast. in California. It's hard. Yeah. So Not many you, people go, go, go east, young lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, west, do, young man. Do you so, think this however, is, you know, yeah. I, our area is, yeah, it's, you would never think, I mean, I know people have an idea of what New Jersey is, and it's, you know, a lot of suburbs, uh, you know, there's industry, there's, you know, little, you know, you know maybe some decaying cities. But uh, much of New Jersey is not like that. And our, our particular area is just very beautiful. It's, it, we have, for example, within our town, there are 42 preserved farms. 42 of them, and we are just one of them. And it's a green valley, um, and, you know, it's just, um, yeah, you, may, you always have an open invitation to come. We're an hour from New York City, and um, come. And, and I think maybe we'll change your mind. Wow. Do you think that this could be a model for other doctors' practices? I mean, have any of them written you and say, hey, I want to do what you're doing? Or, uh, you know, do you have a... a Waited. Yes. Well, it's very exciting. We got a, I got called, uh, you know, I am an assistant professor of clinical medicine at my old alma mater, Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School. And a month ago, we got, we were contacted by the first year medical students. One of them founded um, under the Department of Humanism, the Lifestyle Medical Students Association. They found out, guess what? What? <laughs> that perhaps something with food and maybe moving around and being fit was more the most effective way to help people. And now there are about 20 or 30 students in that first year medical class who are so charged up about this. They, they now are coming to the farm. I've made a presentation to them in Newark and now they're coming to the farm and we're going to uh, sit down and figure out how we can collaborate to bring the medical students, interns, and residents to the farm, and any attendings who want to learn what this rich world is about. That would be amazing. So, so instead of doing like a rotation in obstetrics, they'll do a rotation in farming. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, for years, we, we always had, we always invited, and that's how I got the title of the professor. We always hosted uh, students and interns and residents at my old practice, you know, in an inner city area. And, um, you know, I think it's incumbent upon doctors to always teach. Doctors are, are you know, f f first and foremost, we are teachers. And, and we learn to do what we do because teachers taught us, other doctors taught us. So we always give back and always welcome the opportunity to teach young students and yeah. doctors. Well, you know, I was thinking, you know, that Dr. Esselstyn has a family farm, and they have, uh, like, events there. They call it plant stock. You, I think you yes. should be doing some events, you know, with speakers. I did. Well, I, I did speak. That was my entree. I, I, I made my big debut uh, last August. I was uh, – Rip kindly um, invited me up, and um, I spoke. Right. At but, plant stock. but I mean, have your own, have it at your farm, have something at your farm. I mean, you've got the space. Well, we intend, yes, we, we intend as we expand our programming, we intend to have um, in the coming season, a whole variety. I mean, it won't be one event, but it's, it's a, it's a weekly, there, there are many, there hopefully will be many menu items, including, you know, yoga, um, uh, yoga sessions, farm fit programs, cooking classes, you know, lectures, movies, you know, all kinds of things, dinners on the farm on a weekly basis combined with our, you know, CSA pickup and produce pickup and planting schedule. So, you know, the farm will be open to the public so people can come and, and enjoy it. And we'll have like a little plant stock um, every week. Yeah. Right. It just sounds like such a fun way to practice medicine. I mean, it just, it just, I would much rather go to a farm than to go to a hospital. Yeah. 
I, uh, we, if you go to our Facebook page, um, I posted um, about a week ago, I was standing in the examination room and I looked out the window and there's, we have sugar maples, old sugar maples that surround our old farmhand's house where I now have the medical practice. And I looked out there and I saw 50 yards from me, these golden leaves drifting down on top of our orange tractor. And I looked out the window, I snapped a picture of it and we put it on the Facebook page. When I was looking out that window, I thought of all the places I've been taking care of patients and to look out onto the scene from my examination room it stirred me so much that, um, well, I took the picture and, and posted it. It is an honor and a pleasure to be in such a place. Wow. It sounds amazing. What does a typical day look like for you? Uh, well, um, oh, we usually um, start in the morning um, and we start seeing patients. And as I said, there, there are a variety of different kinds of patients. Sometimes patients come from as far as away as I mean, we've had patients come from California. Wow. Uh, with, and usually the, more, the farther they come, the more dire their situation is cancer patients who come farther distances or, or, or patients who have difficult to solve problems. We have a patient from Washington, D.C. who drives up now, a patient from upstate New York, one from Florida who flies. And, and, and so, um, you know, uh, together with Asha, and that's the other thing. It's such a, we sit down, we evaluate each patient. I would say the, the initial a good patient evaluation takes at least an hour on, on, on my part. And then um, my right arm, Asha Gala, who is, uh, works with me to educate the patients, spends an additional time with them. And then, you know, their classes throughout the day will break for maybe a let's toss class and patients come into the medical office and then we'll teach them how to make salads or some recipes, some salad dressings. Then we'll, we may have lunch with the farmers and we'll discuss uh, issues, uh, you know, farm issues and how we can coordinate planting or harvesting, how we can get certain crops to certain individuals uh, who need them. Like, for example, people who have a disturbed microbiome either because they were taking antibiotics for a while or for other reasons, we often coordinate, we discuss how we can best uh, feed these patients our fresh root vegetables that have been directly, immediately directly pulled out of the soil. So they are actually getting some of the soil on their, you know, radishes and carrots and ingesting that mm. with, the, with the great microbiomes from a, a well cared for soil to help them get better faster. So there's all kinds of, uh, all kinds of um, inter interplay between, you know, the different people we have there on the farm all day long. And, uh, you know, then we, then, you know, a resident will come. We had a resident from Montefiore a couple of weeks ago who spent a week there seeing your family practice resident and he was coming in and then we'll work through some patients with him you know, it's um, yeah, it's a it's a pleasure. You measured you mentioned Montefiore. Have you had Dr. Osfeld out yet? Uh, no, but I I had the great honor of meeting Dr. Osfeld at Plant Stock. Great. Uh, when he was there, and he's a wonderful person. Sure. Yeah. Wonderful, and just to, just to give you an idea of how how far we probably have to go, I was speaking to Dr. Osfeld. I said, Dr. Osfeld, you know, I'm not. Do you? You know, I know you're at Montefiore. We have a city of 8 million people. I'm an hour west of you. You know, we have Dr. Furman, not too far from me, Mm -hmm. Flemington. We have me. I think I'm out of a state of 8 million people, which is New Jersey. I'm, I mean, I could be wrong, but Dr. Furman and myself are the, I I know of no other plant-based practicing doctors in the state. And I said, what, how about New York City? I mean, I know, of course, you're wonderful and all the great work you're doing at Montefiore, but is there anyone else in the city of 8 million people? He <laughs> said, yes, there, he knows of one doctor at NYU. 
Wow. But that's it. That's it. So, huh? um, yes, it was wonderful meeting him, and I would love to collaborate with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the future. And he's single. <laughs> yes, he's single, and we're trying to cure that. Yeah, exactly. My now, wife want, is working on that. He doesn't know want, that, but just, she's working just, diligently night and day for to make a shidduch. Yeah, he has a he has a great sense a of humor. Shidduch means a, a match. Yeah, he um. So when I did my Indiegogo fundraising campaign uh, to raise money to do the last seven episodes of my television show Healthy Living, he was one of the first people to contribute. And he contributed quite generously. So I sent him a bunch of food, some of my dehydrated granola and nut crunch. And he wrote me, he sent me an email, he said, thank you, this is, this is perfect for a bachelor. And I wrote back and said, <laughs> no, it's even more perfect for a bachelor, a wife. <laughs> <laughs> and so he sent Touché. me back a smiley face, yeah. So that's fantastic. Now you, let's just go back a little bit, because you, you said a word which I'm not sure everybody's going to know what it means, even though we're hearing a lot about it. You mentioned microbiome. What is it, yeah. in case some of our listeners don't know, and why is that being talked about so much now? Mm. Well, um, there are there are two things that we uh, that draw what we do on the farm and our entire project together, which are focal points of the way we help people the most. One of them is we believe is the way the way phyto chemicals or special powerful plant molecules affect our DNA and, ex- and affect the expression of it. So that's one thing. And, and it matters the way we, how we grow these plants, uh, that to, the way we grow the plant, plants and the planting methods determine the, the um, effect that these molecules have on our DNA. So that's one, one thing. The other aspect that is also critically important, important which, which we are just beginning to appreciate now, which has been invisible, fairly invisible up until well, about a decade or so, five years ago, is the effect uh, of um, the trillions of microorganisms, uh, the effect they have on our entire life. And these organisms are living in our colon Believe it or not, I mean, we, you know, we're beginning to appreciate that soil is filled with microorganisms, about 3 billion of them within a tablespoon of soil, 80% of them we haven't even identified yet. Believe it or not, the human colon has even a denser population of bacteria than that. It's the most dense on earth. So, and we, we used to think, you know, when I was in medical school, they would teach, okay, what does the colon do? Okay, it absorbs water and it has something to do with potassium. It absorbs potassium, lets out, you know, some electrolytes, that's about it. We know now that it's intimately, um, intimately involved in the maintenance of human health. Uh, some of the things that we are now aware of is that uh, people who are overweight have certain bacteria uh, in them that people who are thin uh, don't have and thin people have other kinds of bacteria. So that's just an example of how bacteria in our colon can determine our health. They, they can be related to weight, the wow. weight that we carry around it, yeah. and many cool. other things. Yeah. Wow. So, it, so can we, can we transfer some of this bacteria from the, uh, from the thin people to the fat people and make them thin? Uh, well, um, well, you know, this is, uh, this is a topic of constant study and, and, and discovery. You know, there are people who have this horrible Clostridium difficile, which is, which is a major epidemic right now. It's, it's a very resistant and life-threatening bacterial infection that people can get in their colons. And uh, it's oddly enough caused by using antibiotics. But the treatment has been antibiotics up until now. Until now, there's some resistance strains no one can help and guess what we are finding out that if you transfer stool like through an enema from a healthy person into that sick person with that really bad bacteria it can cure them where no other treatments did so you're right that that's like an example of transferring bacteria from one 
from a healthy person into another where it can save their life. It's kind of gross uh, yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, but it actually is it actually is an accepted treatment. But we don't have to, you know, for the average individual, you don't have to go that far. Just the process of eating whole unrefined plants sets into uh, sets into gear the growth of amazing good bacteria that help okay. us. Just the more fibrous greens and the more fibrous plants you eat that fiber turns into like fertilizer it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy which grows and supports and encourages the good bacteria that make people healthy Um, and then the other thing was wonderful is that we've known for a long time on farms children who grow up on farms uh There have been studies done for over decades that these children and other people who are denizens of farms have a much different uh, microbiome and bacterial component than do urban and suburban dwellers. And this is associated, regardless of their diet, just being on the farm because they're getting these good soil bacteria getting into them, that it, it improves their health tremendously. This is so fascinating. That is just that's, yeah. it's just the stuff that they're uh, coming up with. Do you actually do any of the farming on your farm, or you're just a little bit too busy seeing patients? Um, I, you know, getting up the the practice is a, is a twenty seven hour a day job. I try to pitch in when I can. You know, I uh, at this point I'm you know I'm not really pulling weeds. I, I'm more active in, in the planning. Um, what is to be planted? The the selection of certain cultivars, you know, and and the planning stages. Um, and you know, I love like like for example, this past year, um, I did have the wonderful opportunity to plant some heirloom flint corn varieties. We had it as a trial. These mm. are corns that are not you know, these modern sweet corns that were actually developed from a mutation about 150 years ago. You know, corn was never sweet until about 150 years ago. Right. And these are the corns that are so wonderful and polentas and they have very rich flavors. And there are a couple that are really old. Some of them were almost lost to, you know, the dustbin of history because they never made it. So we're trying to establish them in our area to see how they grow. And so I was, I basically took that <laughs> task on single handedly. Uh, you can see, I believe there's a picture. I can't remember if it's on our website of me with the, our farm intern, Pete. Mm. So before a storm, we were out there trying to get these the seeds in. But uh, yes, my objective is I would love to. Sometime, someday when the practice is more up and running, I dedicate at least a day or two to being out there, pulling weeds, hands in the soil, bending down, crouching, kneeling, getting, because our farmers, when you mm-hmm. look at them doing this, they're not farmers who are driving around in air conditioned cabs, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. on, on, in combines, they are some of the most fit people you'll ever see. Wow. And, uh, it's, it's a great way to get fit and to connect yourself to the earth. Do you have time to get fit yourself? I mean, you look very fit, but with a, with a 27 hour a day job, do you have time to do any kind of physical it's always uh, a constant, It's It's a constant, uh, it's a, it's a constant, uh, thing that we have to pay attention to. I do work out about four times a week. Um, and you know, I would, you know, I am going to be augmenting that over this as part of my New Year's resolution to try to make that a daily occurrence. You know, it's funny. I don't know if you know the Houston cardiologist, Dr. Baxter Montgomery, but when I spoke at his symposium, I thought it was so cool that he had a restaurant at his practice and a gym. But I think you've even beat him. You got a farm. You know, you got a farm. Thank you. Uh, I, you know. Yeah. So, do you, are there any animals, any animals or pets running around? Uh, yes. Well, they, the people always ask that. Uh, we have, um, we're in this very, you know, this, it's a very poignant place because 
this farm almost was destroyed. It's older than America is, okay? It's been a working farm for 275 years. Mm. Uh, yet it, it's, it's a national historic landmark, but it almost met its end and was paved over into subdivisions, industrial parks, and three separate occasions in the last 60 years mm. until it was permanently preserved. So it was preserved with this large surrounding swath of contiguous agricultural lands and wild spaces. So today we have about, there are the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection has um, recorded eight endangered and threatened species on our farm alone. And we have, we, I, we have cited, there are, you know, uh, enormous black bears on our farm Wow. Uh, blocks of wild turkeys, which, by the way, I know that's not a big thing for California, but they were extinct when I was growing up in New Jersey, and they were reintroduced in the 1970s. Uh, we have uh, on in our streams we have uh, uh, the wild native brook trout of New Jersey, which was thought to have been extinct up until about five years ago, when the DEP did DNA analysis and found them in our streams. Um, we have we have all kinds of other wonderful birds and and flora and fauna. Um, as far as you know, um, this a um, as far as domesticated animals. Yeah, um, dogs and cats. I was wondering any any farm. Yeah, dogs. well, we don't. We haven't gotten. We would like. You know, cats are always useful around a farm mm-hmm. because they control. You know, rodents. But the problem right. is because we have such a rich, we, we're the second, one of the highest and most densely um, cited bird uh, areas in New Jersey. And we have so many songbirds that, uh, you know, cats are usually enemies of songbirds. So we didn't want to get a cat. Oh, boy. So um, we do currently have goats, oh. uh, which were cast off from our neighbor, which is the Valley Shepherd Creamery which is a local um, landmark. It's the largest sheep <laughs> uh, milking herd of sheep in the United States. So they were, they have goats uh, and they were going to, you know, the runs of the litter uh, were donated to us. And so now they eat our weeds. <laughs> we're using them for that. And we use their manure to uh, fertilize our, okay. our soil. But and, <laughs> You're not using yeah. their and to transfer the microbiome, though. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And we have there. We're surrounded by a number of horse farms, and there, these these uh, horse farmers are kind enough to deliver us fresh manure every day. Wow! So, <laughs> what a, such a that's deal. That's what we're huh? doing now. Yeah. So I was just curious. The name Ethos Health. When I looked up the word Ethos in the dictionary, it said the characteristic spirit of a culture, era, or community as manifested in its beliefs and aspirations. So why did you call your practice Ethos Health? Oh, I think there are many reasons, but maybe the most concrete reason that I can give you the shortest answer um, is that um, I I mentioned before that uh, this beautiful land was threatened with development three separate times. It was almost destroyed, completely annihilated. And on the, on the, the last time, uh, the people of Long Valley came together. This was in 1994. They were going to take the entire, like, like uh, 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 about a thousand acres of this land and turn it into a housing development with strip malls. And, the townspeople got together, took $12 million. Now this is in the early nineties and, and bought the development rights, not the farm, just the development rights for this land. And it was the first time in the nation's history that this happened, that the, that the people of a town preserved the farm in this manner and then what happened was the state of New Jersey and Morris County came and reimbursed the town people for their $12 million of tax money. Wow. So it was the ethos of our community that made, Interesting. Okay. that preserved this beautiful land. Yeah. Okay. And that's why we are here today. Right. So Great. this is really payback 
for nice. us. I mean, we're giving giving the people, you know, good things, we think. Fantastic. You know, I, I do this PowerPoint presentation, Dr. Weiss, and it just, I just dawned on me there's a slide in there that kind of reminds me of your practice. It's a, it's a picture of a physician, you know, wearing a, a stethoscope and a white coat, and she's saying, you must be eating too many vegetables. I can't seem to find anything wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> I should send that to you. Very good. It, 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 just, it reminds me. So who does the cooking in your family? Oh, my wife is an excellent cook. Um, Great. She does, uh, she does most of the cooking. Um, you know, I, a lot of the times, you know, I have to tell you that it, oh, when I'm at work, um, I like to, if I have to fix things myself, I just like simple things. You know, our, mm-hmm. the vegetables are so fresh and delicious. And that's what we try to instill in people and the value of having a local, like a farmer grow these things that, the vegetables have different tastes and just eating yeah. the vegetables without not, not a lot of, um, you know, right. rearranging and recipes, you know, just having that delicious sweet potato and baking awesome. it and putting yeah. it together with, you know, just eating those carrots and having a nice bowl of dark greens. It's, right. you know, doesn't need a lot of fixing. It's like, because I, I teach a couple times a year at a spa in Mexico called Rancho La Puerta, and they have this gorgeous organic garden. And before we make the food, we go out and pick it right before we cook it. And people that say yeah, they yeah, hate yeah. vegetables, it's because the, the vegetables that you buy in the store don't taste like the vegetables. Right, I'm sure. they don't taste them. Right. Yeah. It, it, and and, and what, yes, and the amazing thing is that those those molecules that determine the aroma, that uh, determine heightened flavor, rich, deep colors. Those are the molecules that are very dependent on the growing methods. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a conventional piece of produce that's been stored or whatever, these molecules are not, not at high levels. And so when you, you, when you buy something or get something that's freshly grown at a high level, they're accentuated and, and they make them taste so good and, it smells so good. And, uh, and to boot, those are the molecules that are very powerful at reversing and preventing disease and changing our DNA expression. Yep, yep. So who inspired you the most in your life to become who you are? Oh, there are many. You know, it's a process. There, there are many people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, mm, you know, I, I guess my parents to become a physician mm-hmm. and, you know, my mother's pl- helping me to plant these things at an early age and mm-hmm. cast the die as far as my love of plants. Um, you know, my, there were, ma- I've had many wonderful teachers who taught me how to be a physician. There's so many, I, I couldn't mention all of them. Um, and I would say, um, you know, there's two, two you know, there are two, two farmers who I've taken as my mentors who have been just wonderful to me. And one of them is Mark Canwright, and he's part of a father-son team, the Canwrights of New Jersey. They were the first organic farmers of New Jersey going back to the 70s. And they, just, they were just wonderful. And uh, a man by the name of Dan Gunther in the Hudson Valley who – who, uh, when I was trying to figure out, you know, how to put this farming and growing food and medicine together, I was thinking maybe it should be a homestead, maybe it shouldn't be a big farm. And, and he inspired me when he said, no, you have, to gr- you have to grow food for people. It has to be for, it has to be for the community. And, you know, that's got me to thinking on a, on a broader scale. Mm. And of course, our our wonderful farmer, farm manager Nora, uh, who is just such a fantastic farmer, and our field manager Katie, who are, they're just wonderful, uh, and you know they run the farm on a day to day basis, just create beautiful stuff. Mm. If people wanted to get in touch with you or find out more about your practice, what's the best place to send them? Um, well, uh, go to our website. It's uh, myethoshealth.com 
my M Y and then the word ethos E T H O S help H E A L T H dot com, and uh, you can contact us through there on the contact page. And our telephone number is uh, 908-867-0060. Any plans to write a book or anything like that? Uh, people always ask that. Um, I, I got to keep asking. Uh, the same. Okay, next. I question. guess in my downtime, I, after I after uh, you know, I pull get, pay more attention to pulling weeds with the farmers and you know getting dirty. Maybe may that maybe will be on the the list of things to do. Okay. Well, since you keep saying that everybody asks you the questions I'm asking, here's one that I don't think everybody asks. It says that you have an undergraduate degree in music. So what's that about, and how come? Oh, um, yeah, music uh, it was my first language. I, I read music before I could read English. And um, it affects, I feel, the way I, you know, think about the connections of everything in the world. And I, I'm, you know, I love music. I think music is, in, is critical in one's health. And it's, we hear music in our natural surroundings. And um, so I, you know, I sustain these music, musical connections and um, try to uh, imbue them. We try to imbue them in our children and make sure music is an important part of their life. And um, this coming year, hopefully, we will be bringing this music to the farm in a formal way. We've had some musical events, but this year we'd like to make that more formal and have wonderful, um, you know, musical events at the farm. Do you play any instruments yourself? Yes, I have a my degree. Right, I have a dual degree from Rutgers. It was in, uh, I have a degree in botany and also in piano performance. And uh, wow. I was a first violinist at the 92nd Street Y Symphony in, in New York for about 11 years. You are just a fascinating guy. I mean, you just really... Yeah, but I play out of tune. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 let, we'll, let you, we'll let you... So it doesn't sound like you have a lot of free time, but what do you do for fun when you do have free time? Um... Uh, go on adventures with the children okay. and my wife mm -hmm. uh, go on our, our little vacations and uh, you know, spend time with uh, the grandma and the grandpa, Sheldon and Isabel and play tennis. We love tennis. We love swimming. We're big swimmers and tennis players and wow. enjoying nature. Wow. Well, that sounds really good. So, is your father is still? So, it was was it your father or your grandpa that had the pancreatic? It was my father. My and, father. And, did, and is he still around? No, he he was um, he was basically diagnosed near death. Uh, he was given three months to live, uh, and he refused all the conventional treatment and instead went on the diet. And he was instead lived eighteen months. And that 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 eighteen month period was the richest probably uh, in his later life. He did extremely well during that time, and then had a very precipitous decline, and then died because you know the cancer was very advanced at its um, at its diagnosis. But you know we saw over the year we saw a fifty percent reduction in the size of his many tumor masses. You know, which is, you know, there's no chemotherapy that's known to do that today for pancreatic cancer. Right. Now, you're an assistant professor at uh, Rutgers New Jersey Medical School. So are you actually teaching classes to medical students? Um, well, my role as professor there is a clinical, I'm assistant clinical professor of medicine. So we teach the students when they come for their clinical rotations through the office. I see. I see. So uh, and cool. I did lecture this past uh, about two weeks ago, and we hope now, now that we have the farm practice up and running, we want to become, you know, more um, have more programming 
other yeah. than just the clinical programming. So yeah, that we look forward cool. to that this year. If you, could, if you could get them early on, that might be really cool, you know, kind of Yeah, they're so them. excited. I, I think they really get that this is important stuff. So they're so inspired to do this. And, you know, when you're, when you're a medical student, the first and second years, you're, you're, you thirst. You know, you went to medical school because you want to see a patient. You want to help a person. But, you're, you know, the typical first two years is just filled with looking at blackboards and lecture halls, you know, st- studying and memorizing huge amounts of data. So this is so, so out of the box for them, this kind of thing that I think they'll really love it and, and they'll embrace it and make it move forward with me. Very cool. Um, did, did you grow up eating pretty well or were you, you know, or did you grow up? Yeah. So that's an amazing thing. Yeah. My, my mother was, um, you know, I was born in 1962. We grew up in the 60s. I think my mother was ahead of her time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember there were a couple of milestones in my nutritional background as I was growing up. One of them was in the late 60s, I believe it was, in 1970, when the first reports came out that nit- sodium nitrite and nitrate caused nitrosamines, which were carcinogens, mm-hmm. in munchin meats and hot dogs, my mother stopped purchasing all that stuff. Before that, we were eating bologna sandwiches, you know, uh-huh. you know, we were eating like uh, Hebrew national salami and eggs for, you know, for breakfast. It all stopped for the rest of my childhood. We never saw another hot dog or cold cut, you know, that came into the house. And then there was the news that um, mercury was found at very high levels in tuna fish. And then yeah. a couple, that was a couple of years later in the early 70s, all tuna fish stopped. And, you know, we, we continued to eat, you know, meat and chicken and whatever, but, but they were in relatively smaller amounts. Every person had to go through an, a very large family size uh, salad and have multiple sides of steamed and plainly um, – constructed vegetable dishes before you could get like a chicken breast or the piece of salmon or scrot or something like this. So really the animal foods were came at the end of the meal and were limited. So, um, and they were just very simply prepared. Like even through medical school, I lived at home, you know, until I was 26 years old, my mother was cooking these meals. I would drive back from medical school 10 o'clock at night my meals would consist of a huge dark green salad. Mother never used, you know, even this was in the 70s and 80s, never used iceberg lettuce. It was always like local uh-huh. cabbage, romaine lettuce, you know, red leaf lettuce, you know, shredded up, you know, escarole, stuff like that. So, yeah. um, so one day in medical school, I believe it was in the second year, the, one of the professors came from the research department and asked for volunteers for medical students. They wanted to check antioxidant levels in, and vitamin levels in medical uh, students, you know, because they're always looking for medical students as test subjects because I guess sure. <laughs> they have to I pay bet, them anything. I think there's so, the charge. Well, so they told, us, they told us for two weeks ahead of time, they said, we do not want you to take any vitamin supplements, no supplements at all. So, uh, you know, I never, I, we never took any vitamin supplement. So we went to the lab one day, they took our blood and then they, two days later, they called me in and they were angry, you know, well, they were a little, it seemed to be a little upset. And they said, they said, Ron, what we told you not to take for two <laughs> weeks ahead of time, not to take vitamin supplements. I said, I didn't take any vitamin supplements. They said, these the, compared to everyone else, I mean, there's a lot of these antioxidants, the, the, the carotenoids, they're higher than the machine can measure in that our laboratory. Is hilarious. Yeah. That, that is so hilarious. That's the power of plants. I bet, I bet. So, you know, I don't, yeah, I've never asked this question on the show before, but since you have a farm, I'm going to ask it. What's your favorite vegetable to grow and to eat? Ah. Uh, Mm. Well, uh, geez, uh, every season has, has, has its own superstars right sure. now. Yep. Uh, 
Osaka red, uh, mustard greens. Ah, I never uh, had. Oh, they are so delicately spiced and sh- just not too sharp, just sharp enough. Just amazing. Uh, Mazato uh, rose, um, Chinese radishes, which are a light green on the outside, but a deep rose on the inside. So super crunchy and just fragrant. That I just we enjoyed a salad made of that and a dandelion chicory. Like today I had this, these beautiful, and I don't like to, I know, you know, don't like to chop up the leaves too finely because the leaves are so gorgeous and vibrant. I just like to look at them in the bowl. So we tear them up into large chunks and then we mindfully sit there and chew them, chew them, chew them so that we, you know, can crush them properly. So uh, we had a nice salad of that today. We're still working on our heirloom tomatoes. Believe it or not, frost hit us about three weeks ago. Oh. But uh, we, we have some extended, we, we grow about, uh, this past year, about 35 different kinds of heritage and heirloom New Jersey tomatoes. So uh, we ha- just got in right before the frost. We took all the green ones and, you know, they're not vine ripened, but they're still ripening very nicely. And, they're, you know, much, much tastier than anything you can get in the store. So we're working through those. Our fresh garlic uh, is wonderful now. Uh, Next week, we're starting with our winter squashes. We have about maybe 25 different varieties, everything from the delicatas, which are so amazing. I love to eat. The skins are delicious. You just slice them in half, uh, put each one in in the, the oven, sprinkle some turmeric, uh, cinnamon, uh, a little cumin on the top, and, and just replace the two halves so they be, become moist inside. Just eat the whole thing with the skin. I um, love your squash, kombucha, yeah. acorn, you name it. This is my favorite. It's time. wonderful. Yeah. We're going to have think- a lot of sw- different kinds of sweet potatoes coming in now, oh, too. Purple that. ones, red ones. There are two kinds of sweet potatoes, which were, are j- called Jersey sweets. You know, Jersey is still the fourth largest sweet potato producer in the country. Oh, I did and, not know um, that. Yeah, they're called Jersey sweets. So I, I, are, I order a sweet potato every month from Hawaii, the kind they're called the Okinawan ones. Can yes. you grow those or can they only grow in Hawaii? Yeah, so they're about, they're about several hundred varieties of available sweet potatoes. You know, not all of them – not all plants, you know, you may taste something that you say, oh, my, this is the most fantastic, the most delicious, whatever. It may not, even if you have good soil, it may not grow particularly best in your area. So the thing with the Okinawan sweet potatoes is they really need somewhat of a tropical environment oh, to really do well, like Okinawa. And they mm-hmm. don't do that well in temperate climates. The growing season is not quite you know, Got it. long enough and sweet potatoes are a tropical plant but there exactly. are other fantastic varieties purple ones that mm-hmm. we think taste better than okinawan wow uh, sweet potatoes that uh that do grow well so oh. we're always experimenting trying new varieties and in fact rosie and yasha my kids every uh, april we start our entire sweet potato crop on our windowsill we by making slips, then they become the sw- the sweet potato crop for the yeah. for that this the coming year on the farm. That just sounds amazing. You know, I, I yeah. try not to go to the doctor very often, but every now and then I'll go get a physical once in a while. You know, Doctor McDougall always says, "Don't go to the doctor." But it's funny because when, whenever I go, they're always trying to give me some kind of medicine, even if I don't need it. Like they'll give me samples, and I'm thinking. If, if I went to you instead of, you know, handing me pills, you'd probably just give me, a, you know, a bunch of kale or something. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. Well, you know, I don't, th- this is a very controversial uh, subject, whether people should go to get physicals or not. I think from, and there are many different opinions. I think mm-hmm. from a, even our federal government uh, and the Institute of Medicine has found that maybe they're not the best things to do. Mm-hmm. But I think if you're going for the right kind of, I don't like to call it a physical. I like to call it a wellness visit. Yes. 
I yeah. think it can be life changing. You know, yeah. it should be an assessment of where you are yeah. and then where you want to be a year, six months to a year from now. You know, it's always a constant struggle to be healthy. Sure. You always have to work at it. And I think right. the annual physical, which, I, I, you know, the annual wellness visit is a time to take inventory of who you are and what you are at that moment of time and then lay out the plans for this year to always improve on it, sure. including what you're going to do from a fitness standpoint, what you're going to do from a dietary plan point, what you're going to do from, a, you know, an environmental standpoint. There's always stuff to work on. Sure. I, I don't go annually, by the way, but I do go every now and then just to gloat because my labs are always just like they've ne they never yeah. see them. They never see that's cholesterol what, under 100, you that's know. That's what plants so, do for you. Yeah, I know. Right. It's just so fun. Well, gosh, Dr. Ron, mm -hmm. this has gone so fast. Just It's just been such a pleasure talking to you. I can just hear the oh, passion. The pleasure has been for mine, what you do, And I, just, and I, I just, insist I insist on you coming to the no, farm, I want to and my now. challenge is to you, we have to have some kind of special cook-off for you no, yes, let, on you know, the I'm farm sure. with these fantastic nutrient-dense yeah. vegetables, tasty we vegetables. Have, like, we could have an Iron Chef. You know, we, we last week in Cleveland, it was me and three other chefs, Darshana Thacker, Del Shroff, and then the, the two, uh, Anna and yeah. Jane Nicholson. We had an Iron Chef. It would be so fun to do something like that with your farm where we just go out and pick the ingredients and then have to make something. Yeah, absolutely. We can have yeah. an ethos so, version. Great. Well, thank you so much for what you do. It's just been such a pleasure getting to know you and find out about you. And one more time, please tell our listeners your website. They want to find out more about uh, what you do. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the website is my ethoshealth.com. Great. It was so great. So thank you so much, Dr. Weitz, and thank you, everyone, for listening to Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy taste delicious. Good night, everyone.